Then I can look down my side, so I look on the left hand side. Riding my bike in a tall position, which we call like neutral. Rider number six. Sick. Rebel stock. I've been wanting to come here for 10 plus years, so stock to be here. Twenty two PSI on the front, twenty five on the rear, Daniel Casing, Maxis tires. Should be good for today. Oh. Uh. Hey, check out my new jersey. So it's a seven mesh jersey with all the logos of my partners. I think it looks really cool, really fast, maybe a bit too fast for me. Let me know in the comment below. But now I think it's time to ride. So this year again, I'm doing a trip with my buddy Alex across BC. We're gonna do a few stops and this first video is brought to you by Riverstock Mountain Resort. I've actually wanted to come here for skiing and biking for the last 10 years or so. So I'm super excited to be here, especially after riding yesterday, we had an incredible time. So today I'm gonna take you down my favorite lap. It's got some really cool features and we're gonna talk about tips and skills especially for bike park it's gonna be a fun video and the next one you'll see will be somewhere in this valley behind me so stay tuned a bunch of really cool content coming on the channel but for now let's ride okay let's go so we're gonna take guild trip which is a blue trail for a little bit so we can warm up until we get to the first single black diamond trail the fish bunker That's a fun blue trail. Oh, look at those worms. Okay, so this is Fish Bunker. It's a single black diamond trail. All the local told us to check it out. And it has to be one of my favorite trail around here. You start by a little skinny drop. And this trail is more like proper downhill, less bike parky. So there's a few man-made features, but overall it's pretty steep. Some like loose loamy shoot, a bunch of different lines, and it's really cool. So let's ride it. Okay. Oh yeah, some proper downhill. Whew. Don't want to get too dirty here, I'm gonna wait for Alex. So, by the way, a storm is supposed to roll, so hopefully it's not gonna affect too much the video. And I don't really know how the dirt is gonna feel. Let's see. Okay, let's ride some more. That's such a fun shoot. Oh, I love riding my dolly bike here. Yeah. 
So I messed up a little bit at the bottom. There's an inside line. So Rex is gonna refilm it. But hiking up, I found a new line. And that's what I love about this trail. So let's find it. Haha, <laughs> so lovely. So inside line here. Yeah. Ah, oh, so fun! This trail is awesome! As you saw, the top part of the trail is really steep with multiple line choices, which is really cool. But that also brings us to our first tip, which is how to pick up the best line when you ride for the first time a bike park or any kind of trail. So for me, the best tip is really to be riding my bike in a tall position, which we call like neutral. So basically I stand fairly tall and that allows me to look ahead a bit more easily so I can pick up the best line, either an inside or an outside line. And if you look at the contrary, walk up racer, when they race downhill, they are a bit more into that ready position and they don't look as far ahead. But that's because they know the trail by heart. They've been studying the track, they know which line is the fastest and they want to go as fast as they can. Whereas here, it's a different mindset. We just want to have fun, discover the trail, be safe and ride all day. So really that neutral position where you stand tall and then if I need to be in that ready position because there is you know, a steep section coming up, a drop, I'm like ready to go. And yeah, that's basically it. Let's finish the trail and do some more jumps now. So it rained, but hopefully the wood is not too wet yet. A lot of you ask me if I do this for style or for speed, but the correct answer is for both. Scrub originally was invented by James Stewart, one of the most talented uh, motocross racers out there. And he was coming on the face of the jump way faster than the competition, who lays the bike, ended up being more stylish, but also way faster. And now everybody does it. It's really fun to do. You can turn a scrub into a whip. And I'll do a complete video with my best tip for scrubs during the summer. But for now, just a quick tip. When I do a scrub on a feature like this, for example, I come slightly on an angle. So I basically carve onto the lip of the jump. And then I want to push on the bike as basically as hard as I can, as fast as I can. And so I end up punching with my right arm in the air. Punch like this, keep the bike close, that lays it a little bit. And I end up being faster, but also safer, especially on a bike park where sometimes the jumps are built to go at a moderate speed. As soon as you start going fast, you overshoot everything. So it's a really good skill to have. So stay tuned for that video coming on the channel pretty soon. Okay, let's go back down a bit more. Ooh, I didn't want to break on the wood. Yeah, oh, it's so fun. Starting to get a bit slick. I have no idea how the dirt is gonna feel when it's wet. We are now at the top of Doomsday. It's another single black trail. This time it's a jump trail and it's really fun. It's got a hip, a bunch of shark fins, some fairly big jumps. So we're gonna check it out. But as you can see, it rained a lot. We had a bit of a storm. And so it might be really slippery. I have no experience with that kind of dirt when it's wet. So we're gonna take it easy, make our way down and check out some of the cool features. So first feature of the trail, you've got that step down above a log. You might think that it's weird. It's actually made in purpose. It's called a scroll catcher. And it's basically to tell you, hey, if you can do this comfortably, you should not go down this trail. So it's a really good way to filter riders. So people who actually ride the trail are qualified enough to do most of the jump following that. So let's do it. I'm gonna tap my rear wheel on it. Should be fun. That's a 
fun one. I'm actually gonna give you some tips on that hip. So this feature is called a left hand hip and you actually find a lot of these in bike parks. I really enjoy them because you essentially have to move your bike in the air in order to properly jump it. And so that makes it more fun. You can be really creative on it. But the one thing you really want to work on is your line coming in. So because it's a hip and you have to land sideways, a lot of people tend to turn on the takeoff. But as a result, if you go fast and turn on that leap, you're gonna miss the landing and land too flat. So the key is really to come into that corner, really look ahead and try to find what we call the spine, which is essentially the angle where the slope of the landing starts and really aim for this. And I like to jump perfectly straight and as I've already taken off and I'm in the air, then I can look down my side. So I look on the left hand side over my shoulder, angle the bike and naturally the bike is gonna turn and land straight so I can then continue the trail. And it's, yeah, it's really fun, really enjoying it. Let's do it again. Oh, that's so fun. That trail is so sick. So as we move down these trails, the features start getting bigger and bigger. Here we've got a sign that indicates that a drop is coming and that drop is actually mandatory. But what's really well built is that there is a safe spot to park your bike and take a look at the feature. And one thing that's really important with riding etiquette is that you should be looking at blind features like this before jumping in for the first time. But you should be looking at them from the top, never from the bottom because you could scare another rider or simply you will not be able to hear another rider coming and accidents could happen. So that way you can safely park your bike here, take a look, do a run-in if you do, and then you could just send it. You actually want to carry good speed for the big jump. Yeah, that's actually worth talking about. It's a little feature so you can no stop or rear tap. And you don't see that in many parks. It's really fun. How's it going? Woo. This rock is really small, which actually makes it harder to do either a no stop or a rear tap than on the lower feature, like we're gonna see a bit later on dust punk. But it's a really good way to practice and improve your skills so then you can comfortably take it to a more consequential jump. One of the tips I have is in order to tap your front wheel or your rear wheel, you should go a bit slower than you would to do the entire jump. So a good thing to do is to jump the double and then adjust your speed accordingly for the rock tap. So go a little bit slower and then just focus on your movement of hitting with your rear wheel or your front wheel. Okay, I'm gonna do a bit of a rear tap on that rock. And now I'm gonna try to tap my front wheel on that rock. Okay, let's keep on going on Doomsday. Super cool shot finish here. And now some nice little double. Haha, <laughs> nice little no-ender. So following that big jump, 
Behind me, we've got a feature I've never seen before in a bike park. We've got some man-made mini stairs. And you can actually jump it, roll it, but me, I'm gonna jump it and nose manual and then keep on going on the trail. So the wood's gonna be pretty slippery, but still gonna try. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. This trail is so sick. The trail behind me has got a bunch of different lines, but if you actually stay outside on first berm, outside on second berm, you can gap that little step up, set up right there, and instead of going straight, you can hip to the left back on the lower line. And it's, it's a pretty big gap, and you have to be like really precise, you really have to flow. But I've uh, done it yesterday, so let's see if I can do it today. Actually, pretty smooth. That was fun. I've developed a little bit of uh, golfer elbow or tennis elbow, even though I don't play either tennis or golf. And so when I pull really hard, it really bothers me. Big impacts are okay, but I try to limit how much I have to pull on the bars so it heals better. And this one, I was worried that I had to like do a big pull to go and reach for the landing, but fortunately, I didn't have to. Back on the fun blue with March March Channel. You can leave me a comment with the correct pronunciation. Oh, that's fun. That's some epic bumps. That's a really fun blues. Oh. With a black option here. And look at this view. So it's actually just Riverstock Mid Station. So first gondola, second gondola. Now on to Dust Punk. It's not gonna be very dusty, but if you know me well, Daft Punk is one of my favorite electronic music group ever so pretty wild like this track yeah it's not dusty today I'm gonna take it easy on the wood I don't know how grippy that is Oh, it's such a fun little lap. Okay, last section of the spank. I knew what was coming, but. I don't remember being that blind. Last trail of the day and probably one of my favorite. It's called Endgame. It starts by some super sweet berms. You carry a really good speed. And then you arrive into that weird berm that basically looks like it's not finished. It's actually called the shark fin. So it's a nice berm. It stops to essentially a little step down. And a lot of people take the compression of the berm. And when they see you know, the edge of the berm, which is essentially the jump, People seem to want to get back the bike standing up and that puts you usually off balance and also offline. Sometimes too much on the inside, sometimes too much on the outside. The way you should ride this berm, you should basically come into the compression and treat it like, like a berm. You don't want to stress back and put back the bike straight. You are supposed to take off sideways so you can keep turning in the air and line up properly with the landing. So now that's a big rock. 
essentially the same kind of features that we saw earlier, but much bigger, much more commitment. The jump is probably 15 feet long, so you need to go slightly slower, be precise, tap your rear wheel right there. You need to make sure that your front wheel though is lower than your rear wheel, otherwise you'll smack your rear wheel on the back, potentially go over the bar. The other thing you could do wrong is to go too fast and basically put your front wheel after the rock, which is also a problem. So a good way to practice it is to be comfortable on the jump and then adjust your speed accordingly, go a bit slower. So let's do it. Such a fun trail. So another tip I have for you for the north stop on a rock like this one is I like to come slightly sideways so I'm not directly looking at the rock. I'm on the side of it and I have to whip a little bit the bike which makes it more stylish but also easier to commit because you are less likely to hit your rear wheel on the rock and if for, don't, for some reason you don't feel it you can just avoid it easily. So it's a little bit easier and a little bit more stylish. Couple of big jumps ahead. Yeah. Woo. Last part of end game. That's such a fun trail. Thanks a lot for watching that video, that was my favorite lap on Revelstock Mountain. My first time here and definitely not my last time. Stay tuned for the rest of the trip, it's gonna be epic. As always, if you want to support the channel, make sure you subscribe. Check out the link in the description to purchase the product I'm using. See you next week.